G'day, I'm Adam from Dyer's Crossing Farm Care. Um, I've had a lot of interest in, uh, from people in how I'm actually going about doing these fences. Um, so I do do things a little bit differently than a lot of people, um, but I'm a bit of a perfectionist with my fencing. Do everything in galvanised steel, um, concreted posts, uh, using about a nine inch auger to do the post hole um, and then uh, concrete it in. Medium tensile wire, this particular fence is going to be seven strands of electric because it's designed to not only hold cattle but also goats, um, including kids, young goats, and uh, we also want it to dissuade foxes and dogs from traversing through the paddocks across the property um, just to make it a bit safer because we do have free range chickens as well and uh, they will graze in these paddocks behind the cattle and behind the goats. So we want to make it as unattractive for a fox to pass through these paddocks as possible. So seven strands of electric um, will make it quite difficult for a fox to get through without getting a zap. And they only have to have that happen a couple of times and, and they won't want to come back. They'll find somewhere easier. So um, first off, a few people have commented on uh, the way that I do my knots and being interested in seeing exactly how I do that. So. I'll um, run you quickly through how I do those. Um, it's a technique that was taught to me uh, back in about 1985 when I was, um, first off when I was in primary school, uh, living on farm out in the central west and the next door neighbour uh, taught me how to do a lot of the fencing. But back in those days things were a little bit different because they were using a lot of high tensile wire um, and everything was done with wire strainers. Uh, I like to use these ratchet strainers because um, they're not that dear, they work out about $5 each um, if you're buying them in bulk. And it means that I can tweak the fence up and get it a little bit tighter whenever I like. And on short runs of fencing, which on this property is common, um, a lot of the fences are only 80 metres or 100 metres long. The longest is probably around 200 metres long. Um, and on short runs of fences, fencing using conventional strainers, it's very hard to get a, a nice tight fence because when you release the strainer after tying your knot, there's always a little bit of give, a little bit of slack in your knot. And when that gets taken up over a short fence, you end up with uh, a, a slack fence. Also too, using medium tensile wire, it will stretch. And um, in 12 months time, I can wander around and give the whole fence a quick tweak. You know, and it, it'll only take half an hour to do the, the whole property. Whereas if I was to go around and need to tweak fences with conventional wire strainers, you've got to cut the fence extend the wire, you've got to add wire in so that you've got something to tie off um, and you just don't end up with as good a fence. So these fences will probably last me the rest of my life so five bucks so that I can give it a tweak whenever I like, it's well worth it. Anyway I'll zoom in, show you how I do my knot and then I'll explain the rest of the fencing system. So what I do is I come around the post, now the knot's the same whether it's on a ratchet or whether it's on a post or on an insulator, the knot's still the same. However, it is easiest on the post because you've got a wider surface area that you're running the wire around, which means that getting doing this point here of actually feeding the wire through without getting a kink is a lot easier. The first place you want the wire to kink is actually up here where you come around. So I'll just do that again. What I've done is I've come around the post. I've gone underneath my main wire, okay? And then I'm going up, over, and back through the loop that I've just made. Okay, and the first place I want the kink is where I've come over that main wire. Now, I don't need to get it nice and tight close to the post at this stage. What I need to do is make sure I've got about a foot, a foot and a half of spare wire out this side. And then when I kink here, this is the first kink, right there. Okay, and we want to kink that nice and tight around our main wire. And then this one's going to come up and over like that. So we end up with... Our main wire comes in around the post, we go under the main wire, over and through the loop, and then we come out and back over the main wire. So we're going to end up with, with that. That's the, the crux of the knot there, where we have this sort of, you wouldn't call it a figure of eight, but it's coming under itself and then back over the main wire. Now what that enables us to do, because we haven't pulled it tight around the post or around the insulator here, it means we can now slide that up and you can get it nice and tight. Whereas if you kink that, back at this point when you first wrap it around, you think, I'll get it nice and tight, makes it very hard to slide that wire up. So then we just pull it nice and tight here, get a good neat knot there, and now 
the reason we want all this extra wire is because it gives us a good lever to go around. And we just, a little bit of muscle and a little bit of technique. And see this up so it makes it a bit easier to see. And we just go around, giving yourself probably four inches of handle out there is about enough. So that when you grab it, and this is where the gloves come in handy because the wire slides nice and easily in your hands. And you're just pulling the wire, not so much around, but out. And as you're pulling out, then you're going over. If you just try and go around, you won't end up with a nice tight knot or a nice tight noose, is what I'd sort of call it. And I like to go around sort of 10 times, roughly. Usually you have to redo your handle about halfway out. Okay. Just try and keep the coils nice and close together. That's probably about enough. So, I want my insulators all to be in a nice neat row just because I like a nice tidy fence. Um, so the idea now, to get the insulator here, I've given myself plenty of extra wire. So we're just gonna feed that through. Now this is where it becomes very important not to make the mistake of kinking the wire in that insulator to say, you know, to lock it in. And it took me a little while to remember this technique. Just switch sides. Because if you kink it there, it becomes very hard to slide your knot up. So what I do is I work out roughly where I want it, and then I come back a bit. And it's the same knot, but it is a little bit harder, as I say, because you're working with a smaller surface here. But we're doing the same thing under, and then over and through, where I want that kink is in there, nice and a nice tight kink. So then I'll pull that back out and go through. Here we go, kink it up like that. And now, normally I'd do this from the other side, but I don't want to block the camera for you. And then we pull it up into the insulator and that will stop it from spinning too much in there. We pull this in tight and then up and over. So you probably won't be able to see it from there, but we're doing the same knot. Well, but you can see there, got quite a tight knot around the insulator and then a noose and same at the other end. Um, because it's an electric fence, obviously you use insulators, you don't go through the, the wire, but even on fences where the wire isn't going to be electric, I still like to use an insulator. Um, this was a trick that was taught to me by Les Roberts, that by passing the wire through the hole, when you get wind or vibration in the wire, eventually that wears the thin layer of galvanizing off the wire at that point, and you'll get rust there, and then before too long, the wire will want to snap right there at that point, and you'll get that at every post. So the wire will snap here, so you add a piece in, join it up, restrain the fence, and it'll snap at the next post. And you'll get a deterioration at every post, because you've just taken that little bit of galvanising off that's protecting the wire from the rust and then once the rust gets in, the wire snaps. So for a lot of people that are just going to be running some steers or some cattle, you know, four wires is more than enough. So you're only looking at an extra $2 a post to add insulated um, insulators to the holes rather than get passing through the hole. It also means that if you end up with any problem where you have a post popping out of the ground and you need to add more posts in, um, or you end up with a damaged post because you clip it with the mulcher mower or something like that and it gets broken, it's quite easy to replace a post because you can undo the pin lock, take the wire out, pull the post out, put a new post in and uh, clip it all back together again. Whereas if you've passed through there and you break a post, you're basically left with the, uh, the your only real option is to hammer another post in right next to it and tie the two together, which um, is a bit untidy and, and uh, you know, there is, this is a better solution. So um, that's how I do this part of the fence. Um, I like to have my fences probably a little bit tighter than they should be, but uh, because everything's concreted in and my posts go down, a bit, my strainer posts go down about 800, plus they've got concreted in stays, I can get away with running my fence a little bit tighter, which means I can get away with putting my star pickets a little bit further apart on this sort of country where it's fairly open and, and reasonably straight gradient, doesn't matter whether it's steep or, or, or flat, as long as it's a continual gradient, I'm running these posts at around 10 metres apart. Um, because the wire is going to be electric, 
um, and because it's nice and tight, that's fine. If you've got undulating country, you need to get those posts closer together and that's when it would really start to get, you know, if you were having to run your posts at five metres apart and you're sticking seven insulators on every galvanised post at five metres apart, you're looking at a pretty expensive fence. Um, but this is, you know, compared to putting in timber with four strands of barbed wire, um, this is a quite an economical fence that will probably see me out. It, it, it should last quite a long time and will be easy to maintain, easy to, to um, keep the blady grass from growing up through the fence because I won't have netting coming all the way down to the ground. Um, with, high, with vertical wires, like, so I can get a whipper snipper or a mulcher, blade, mulcher mower edge in underneath that bottom wire and, and cut, or I can spray. Um, not that I like to spray, but yeah, I hope that gives you a bit of an idea anyway of how I'm putting that together.